Uh, slime. Have you seen LeBron James do a video that you know saying slime to his teammates? All right, Young Thug is finally free after serving like three years, I think. I think this was like the longest trial in the history books. They were really prolonging this one. I'm not gonna lie. They were not trying to let him out. I'm not gonna lie. His lawyer gotta be in the next, not his lawyer, but his attorney gotta be in the next music video. I'm not gonna lie. Gotta be in the next music video. Gotta be in the first day out of music video. I'm not gonna lie. Nah, Young Thug is finally free. And I'm not gonna lie, Mariah the side has really been holding it down. <laughs> she really been holding it down for 2.5 years. I'm not like we old gunna and apology though. Young thugs, everybody was trying to say gunna rat it, gunna rat it whole time. I know all these, all these rappers are itching to get a feature for gunner. I'm not gonna lie. Now they can't switch back. Ever since they seen Young Thug is like the only person, one of the only people, um. That I mean, Gunner is like the old, one of the only people you know Thug can see. <laughs> I know these rappers was issue to do a song with Gunner, but they was trying to say he was a snitch and everything. Nah, the industry owed Gunner an apology. Nah, this what Young Thug coming home to his loyal wife. Well, I don't know their wife. I don't know if it's his wife, but his loyal. Lady, right aside tonight after Thug dislocated her hip. What's up, baby? Merry Christmas. Thank you. Nah, she was really on the jail call and everything. Keeping my boy company. She intended every. Who is this lady right here? <laughs> nah, who is this lady right here? Well, they said she intended every. Nah, he was, she was really with him. Through the ups and down in the darkest moments, she held it down for 2.5 years. Young Thug, when Mariah the Scientist came back and learned new tricks. Uh, <laughs> Why did they have to take Little Dirk? It should have been that nigga Kendrick. Whoa. Nah, I, I don't want to see nobody switch back up after um they see the new, hear the new um Young Thug and Gunna. <laughs> After they hear the new Young Thug and Gutter song, I don't want nobody to switch up. All these rappers was talking about, Oh, Gunner, he's a snitch. I'm not doing no song with Gunner. I'm not doing no song with Gunner. Now look, Young Thug about to do a song with Gunner. Everybody got to stay on their side now. Everybody show their real true colors. My boy Gunner coming back like this. Ah. Nah, Gunna really on a historical run right now too. I'm not gonna lie. Every song he been dropping a hit, like he, it's like he have no misses on his album that he dropped, and his new single's good too. All the other rappers really flopping and stuff. I know they really itching for a song with Gunna, but they can't come back to the side. Nah, gotta nah, gotta gotta drop his nuts a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, gotta gotta drop his nuts. Nah, gonna drop gotta drop his nuts on these rappers. I'm not gonna lie. Nah, Young Thug gotta really beat a Rico. That's crazy, Young Thug. Now, they really tried slapping my boy with 45 years to serve, but my boy Brian still had something to do with it, and he said no. They try to give my boy 20 years to serve. Nah. He served in custody if he doesn't complete probation. 40 years to serve, 5 years, but commuted to time. Nah, Brian's still really the GOAT. I'm not gonna lie. Brian's still the legend. If you ever find yourself in a pickle, call Brian Still. You know how they say call Sal? Call Brian Still. Nah, we gotta check on YSL Woody. See what he doing. If I'm myself, Woody, I'm biting my fingernails like this and hiding in my basement under the covers. Please. Please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs>
Oh my gosh. I'm like, this is my wife, huh, Woody? <laughs> I know that ain't who I think it is. <laughs> nah. All right, why is real? We be celebrating. Lisa Young Thug. Think, thank you, God. All right. Let's see what the Twitter had to say. Oh, reason he was in there. This guy. <laughs> Run. Are <laughs> you snitched? Nah, they telling him to run. Nah, they telling my boy to run. <laughs> nah, why so what he really said? I seen him do it. <laughs> nah, what I tell was in the interrogation room, he said, I seen him do it. <laughs> so much, I know it. A reckless ass when he said that. I killed the nigga and I did that, I seen him do it. <laughs> when he say somebody turned to drop on me, not wrestling my foot. Man, 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 it's man. And I, I seen him do it. I seen him do it. I know he and listen, y'all know who he is. Nah, I wonder is this actually a real interview? Nah, that would be crazy. This is crazy snitching right here. I'm not alive. This is actually a real interview. I think it's just a skit though. But nah, like why so really nah. Why so really was having a whole cod fritz in the interrogation room? Nah, oh let me move this over. Let me move this over some. Nah, why so really was having a whole conference in the interrogation room? Nah, that's crazy. My boy was just trying to go home. <laughs> My boy was just trying to... Nah, this how it be where your mom drag you to the store at her to go grocery shopping. Go home. Nah. Well, I said really probably used to hit people with his head back in the streets. I'm not gonna lie. He probably didn't even need no weapon. He used to hit people with they, his head. How hard y'all think um, Woody Head is? Now, Woody had probably like 100 pounds or something. He probably knocked me out with that head. Huh. Uh, Woody had to look like it's rock solid. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Now, imagine Woody. Why is Woody run head first into you? Full speed. Now, you know you're going down. You're probably going to be in the ER. Nah. I said what he got a noggin on him. His brain his brain probably the size of a walnut. <laughs> that Mr. Williams in the in the indictment, Mr. Williams put out a call for murder. He put twenty four million dollars murder for hire on a person's head. That that is a lot of money and that is awful. If they would have read the chat, the Instagram chat, Mr. Williams, uh, right above it, there's a picture of a very well-known, very accomplished musical artist who actually had surgically implanted in his forehead a pink diamond worth $24 million that day. That's what Mr. Williams would talk about. That's the type of evidence that is coming from the state of Georgia in this case. It is wrong. This is all wrong. And I know we're pleading guilty, and I know we're pleading no low, and I know we're asking this honorable court for a certain sentence, and we'll get to it with the court's permission. But this is the type of evidence that there is. But, there, but the nah, that's crazy. They're trying to use Lil Uzi pink diamond that he had in his head for evidence. <laughs> nah, that's a little desperate. I'm not a lot. That was a little desperate. Nah, Brian still is really making these prosecutors look dumb. Now nah, I gotta really beat the rat allegations people is trying to put on him. Little baby seeing young thug asked to make music with Gunner after he called him a snitch. <laughs> nah. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> Wait, why somebody said Mariah about to be sore? Nah, they gotta chill. Young thug gonna break the mattress tonight. <laughs> nah, they. Chill. Somebody said, still name being engraved in, on Bleveland Ave. Now they gotta get a statue of Brian Still on Bleveland Ave or like a painting on the brick walls of Bleveland Ave or something. Brian Still gotta get. Now they might have to rename the street to Brian Still. I'm not gonna lie. Brian Still gotta go into the history books after this one. 
YSL slimy, <laughs> nah. shady. watch me whack that bitch, pop him like a cyst, Glock with the assist. <laughs> It also consisted of a <laughs> Nah reading the Nah reading Young Thug lyrics the day of the census and it's crazy. Like moments before he got to be sentenced is crazy. They've been trying to use the lyrics against Young Thug ever since the child started. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. This is crazy. And this is the way she say this. She tried to make it seem terrible. Song wherein Mr. Williams sang or rapped the lyrics, hey, this is that slime shit, that YSL shit. Nah, this is devious. She had, I heard her say this, bar, nah, I heard her say this same exact bar already, I'm not gonna lie. Killing 12 shit, fuck a jail shit. I'm in the VIP, I got the pistol on my hip, fuck the police. You praying that you live, I'm praying that I hit this is slime shit. A hundred rounds in a Tahoe, I'm prepared to take him down. Got banana clips for all these nah. acting monkey. This is that slime shit. This is that mob shit. Fuck the judge. Why sell? This that mob. <laughs> nah. Nah, this is crazy. Why'd you brought this up? Nah, this is devious. Nah, the prosecutor really wasn't trying to let my boy out. Now this gotta be the next album cover right here. Sign him to YSL ASAP. If I ever get in any legal show, I'm calling Brian Still. Now you know what's crazy? This child been going on so long. They started a whole Twitter page to keep the update, to keep everybody updated on the trial. Now shout out Thugger Thugger Daily. I don't know what he gonna be posting now that this child's over. The first Young Thug instant of a live gonna hit like crack. Bringing Young Thug. Nah. Young Thugger Thugger Daily, you really been keeping us updated for like two and a half years on the whole YSL trial. Nah, this is actually crazy. This is how long, long the, um, this trial been going. This page got 11,000.7 posts on Twitter. Now we gotta give Thugger Thugger Daily their flowers. Now nah, it's been a long week. Now they was really chilling in the courtroom though. All right. Count one, which is the racketeering conspiracy count. Mr. Williams is tendering a plea under Nolo Contendere as to count. 56, which is participation in a criminal street gang activity as being a leader or a supervisor or organizer. Mr. Williams is also tendering a plea to this honorable court as under nolo contendere. The balance of the count, so he is tendering a guilty plea. Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. Would the court like to hear from the state or not? Um, about the nolo issues? Yes, yes. Sure. Sure. No Your Honor, the state uh, asked that the court the? Um, not accept a no low plea and require either a, a guilty plea or a not guilty plea as to these charges. Uh, all right. I'm going to permit a no low plea as to counts one and 56. All right. All right. So Young Thug with, with a no low plea. A no low plea, also known as a plea of no contest or no defense, is legal plea where the defendant. Neither admits nor denies the charges against them. Instead, the defendant accepts the charges, agrees to the sentence, and fine. All right, no low plea. Still is going to tell Judge Thug that I went home today 15 years of probation, but used to testify now the state wants 25 years. Shooter uh, misstated many pieces of evidence and then. Took liberty that that is. Oh, I gotta restart this. Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. Um, many of the statements made by the prosecutor we vehemently disagree with. The prosecutor uh, misstated many pieces of evidence and then took liberty that that is the state's theory. Mr. Williams is tendered, has tendered a 
Nolo Contendere plea to the RICO conspiracy count. And in that count, there are several overt acts. And the first one, um, Your Honor, deals with a traffic stop. It's on September 9th of 2013. And I won't go through every one because it might take a long time. But just for completeness for this, as court knows, Mr. Williams is driving a car. There is a dash cam video of the stop. The yeah, I know they legs hurt. <laughs> My boy Ty right here, he just wiped under his glasses. Uh, um, officer who testified at the trial 11 years later. The case was um, a gun was found under the passenger seat. Um, Mr. Williams is not tied to the gun. He's not convicted of that and the dash cam video that the officer said would have picked up sound as well as definitely vi video um, was never turned over to us, supposedly lost, could not explain the loss. The armed mm. robbery. Boy, yes, cooking. Brian's still cooking. All right, next one. The state is talking about things like F the judge and I rep my life for real. That's not even said by Mr. Williams. But they don't care to find out. They are on a... What? But they don't care to find out. They are on a tunnel vision to try to convict a man. Your Honor. The state... Is All right. That was them trying to use the lyrics, I guess. ...on May 9th of 2022. There were other people in the house with the drugs and the guns. There were people whose the guns are in their names. Okay. Let him, cook. Let, him cook. Let him cook. Let him cook. Let him cook. Everybody else was doing as well. But Mr. Williams has entered a guilty plea. I'm not going back on that. But I just want you to know that, that this case is just wrong to do to somebody with no bond and to hold him hostage. He wants to. He, he, you may not do it. He's aware of that. He's aware of that. But the state offered him 15 years on probation. But they keep piling on these conditions. He just said, he made up his mind. He said, I'm just going to go with it. I got to get home. Judge may not let me home, but I'm not doing these conditions and admit that I'm the leader and I'm involved in the killing and my music just mm. promoted everybody to do it. He's not going to do that. So he did not do that. And that's how we wound up here. Arrested on hey, May my 9th. My boy had to take the glasses off on them boys. Had to take the goggles off. Really talk to them, some sense into them. My boy, Brian Still. Now, Brian Still really the GOAT. He really put Curry numbers in this case right here. Would they have no, Mr. Williams have no contact with any of the co defendants in this indictment, with the exception of Mr. Quantavius Greer, that is his biological brother. Gunner? As well as Mr. Sergio Kitchens. He's a phenomenal artist. Gunner. He goes performer known as Gunna, G-U-N-N-A, Mr. Williams and Mr. Kitchen. Gunna, no, that's crazy. Everybody tried to like, really, everybody really hating on Gunna, calling him Ratat, what did he call him? Ratatello and stuff. They was calling him all rats and stuff. Every, all these rappers was dissing him and stuff. Now look at him. Now look at him. Now look. Huh. Seems like Gunner did it right. Everybody dissing him and stuff. Now, Gunner really having, like, a historical run right now, too. He dropped an album. Like, all Gunner songs that he dropped was hitting. Like, I think he dropped 12 songs. I don't remember, but 12 out of 12, 12 for 12. Like, Gunner was really winning when he got out. And everybody trying to call Gunner a rat everything. Now, look. ...are contractually obligated and they frequently perform music. Nah, they say this gunner showing Thug all the rappers <laughs> that was dissing him while he was in the feds. What, what is LeBron looking for? <laughs> <laughs> now they say this gunner tell all the rappers that was dissing gunner. Together, Your Honor, Mr. Williams have no contact with any of the co-defendants in this indictment with the exception of Mr. Quantavius Greer. That is his biological... When just... This morning, it was a probationary offer. 
It was a probationary law. The state knows, but they want to control. They have this theory of music, and they want to stop Mr. Williams from making music, from entertaining, just stop his life. That's just not right. And it's wrong of the district attorney in Fulton County to do that. If they offer probation, then he's not a 45 to serve 20 five years in custody type of person, and he's certainly not the person that the state has stated in front of the court. What we're asking, Your Honor, on count one, which is the RICO count, to accept the no low contendere plea. Please sentence Mr. Williams to five, 20 years to serve five years in prison, commuted to time served. Mr. Williams has served, as I said, 20, two and a half years. On count 56, Your Honor, I really like Brandon Brian still like he was really standing on business the whole like the whole time the whole court time he was really standing on business I'm talking about he was yelling at the judge and everything getting them straight yelling at the judge nah he was really standing on business he was moving different I never seen an attorney act like Brian still like he was really talking to the judge crazy now when I see he was talking to a judge crazy he was talking just so crazy. I thought it was going to kick him out of the courtroom. That's the leadership of a gang. Nolo plea, 20 years to serve, five years, commuted to time served, consecutive to all other counts. On count 57, which is a gang count, Your Honor, not a leader, guilty plea, 20 years to serve, five years, commuted to time served, concurrent with count one. With the guard to count 58, which is possession of, I believe it is um, marijuana, marijuana with intent to distribute, 10-year sentence on probation, concurrent with count one. On count 59, which is violation of Georgia Controlled Substance Act, possession of codeine, with intent to distribute five years on um, probation concurrent with count one. On count 59, Your Honor, which is violation of Georgia Controlled Substance Act, possession of cocaine, three years on probation concurrent with count one. God. Count 61, five years of probation. Count 61. Firearm count consecutive to the other counts consecutive to um, before count uh, 56 <laughs> and then count 62 10 years to serve commuted to time served that should be a total sentence your honor that we are respectfully requesting the court to consider I believe it's 45 years to serve five years in prison commuted to time served 40 years on probation credit for the time already served and community time served as I said after three years of probation the probation becomes non-reporting, and after successful completion of 10 years on probation, the balance of the sentence be terminated. Mr. Williams um, asked the court for house arrest for three years as part of the sentence, but house arrest specifically defined that Mr. Williams will be in his home or at any lawful employment, touring, studio, performance, business meetings, and the like, wear an ankle monitor, for the first year and pay the costs of same. And the company must be approved by probation department and the ankle monitor to be affixed within 10 days of okay. hopeful release from custody. Well, Mr. Cooking. Williams cannot possess a firearm, but he can be around licensed security who are armed or other persons who are lawfully carrying a firearm with a license. And that would be knowingly for Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams, can transfer probation outside the state of Georgia. He has residences in the state of California. He has studios in the state of California. Mr. Williams be allowed to travel throughout our country and the world for lawful work related industries. Mr. Williams wants to perform. He's going to do this anyway, Your Honor, but we made it part of the sentence at least one concert each year at a venue if they'll have him over holding 10,000 people 
if that if that is workable for the venue and Mr. Williams management and he is going to donate all of the profits that he makes to a 501c3 charity. Mr. Williams wants to pledge $100,000 for the next three years to the Fulton County Sheriff's Office if they will hold an illegal firearm buyback to buy back firearms that are not supposed to be on our streets. Mr. Williams does not wish to go near the Cleveland Avenue area, not to insult that area at all, but it is just not a good idea under this circumstance. And um, he, he can drive on the highway, but otherwise not come within one mile of the area that we call Cleveland Avenue, and we, could, we can give the exact dimensions of that area. Mr. Williams must perform 100 hours of community service per year for the next three years as designated by probation department. Mr. Williams can associate. Dang, I'm losing, I'm losing track of all these specifications and stuff. And this was agreed to previously with people who are convicted felon or alleged gang members solely for lawful purpose of making music. All right, young thug speech. Um, yes, ma'am. Um, mm -mm. I take full responsibility for, you know, my crimes or my charges. Uh, I want to say sorry to my family, my mom. My mom got 11 kids. I can't say all their names, you know. My managers, my kids that's not here. Uh, really, everybody that got something to do with this situation, I want to say sorry for just, like, you know, been having so much time investing into this, you know, and um, I am a, a, a smart guy. I am a good guy, and I really got a good heart, you know. I, I find myself in a lot of stuff because because I was just nice or cool, you know, and I understand that you can't be that way when you reach a certain height because it could end bad. And then, and they don't really have to have nothing to do with you, but it could end bad, and it could, you know, fall on you. And I know <clears throat> the choice is yours; is up to you. And I hope that you allow me to go home today and and just trust in me to just do the right thing and never see you again, unless it's unless it's at a you know bar in the future or something. Just out of this type of situation, I promise you, I won't ever be in this type of situation again. I'm. I'm going away. I've learned from my mistakes. You know, I come from nothing and I've made something and I didn't take full advantage of it. I'm sorry. Uh, through these last two and a half years of my life, you are really, truly, honestly, the best thing that has happened to me because you made, made everything fair for me and everybody involved on both sides, you know. Um, I'm sorry to the sheriff, you know, everybody for just having to put extra time in. I know y'all got paid more money, but I'm sorry for y'all <laughs> to put this extra time in to be away from y'all family, you know, and I just hope that you find it in your heart to allow me to go home and uh, be with my uh, family and just do, do better as a person. I know what I bring to the table. I know what I am. I know the heights I've reached. I know the impact I got on people, period, in the community, you know, all people. I learned that late, like past these past two or three years of my life, I kind of learned that late. And maybe it was because I was, you know, probably on drugs or anything. I don't know. But I have came to my senses and I understand what I mean to this world. But I am a good guy, you know, I, I I don't mind doing stuff like, you know, like uh, free shows, and I always did that, you know, I, I did free shows and gave it to single parents, millions of dollars, you know, I made $1.8 million on, on a free show, and I gave it all to single parent charity, and I did like two or three shows that made like 700000 a piece, and I gave it to uh, the breast cancer organization, like, you know, I, I, I do things, like I put millions of dollars back into my community for real. I really did. I did more mm. than anybody ever did from my side, you know? 
but I understand, you know, rap lyrics. I understand how it could be twisted. I understand what it could do to the mind of people. I understand all that, and I'm, I promise you I'm 100% changing that. You know, it's just I'm older. I'm grown now, you know, and it's just like I'm smarter. I, it's more things to rap about. Like, I, I've experienced a lot of good things. I experienced more bad things, but I experienced a lot of good things, too. And anyway, I can, I can go for forever. Well, I appreciate it. And um, I appreciate that you do realize how much of an impact you have on people. Um, I mean, it's it's. It's past your neighborhood. It's worldwide, especially young people. And having come up from where you came up from and living in and around that, you know that gangs are damaging to our community. And it may be that a whole lot of rap music and the rap industry is, I mean, honestly, it sounds like a modern day version of kind of WWE wrestling that used to be on WWE. television where people would just get up and posture and act like they hated each other. And it may be that that's a lot of what is going on in the music industry with rap, but whether it is fake or not, it has tremendous impact on kids and young people who think this is cool, this is what I wanna do. Look at him, he's a millionaire. I can do that by being you know, a, a gangster in the streets. Mm. And that's not true. What you're likely to have mm. happen to you if you're a gangster in the streets is you get shot, you get killed, or you get thrown in prison. And those are, facts, you know, facts. by far the most likely outcomes. And, you know, you saw, you've been in here watching the trial and you've seen the pictures of Mr. Ryan posing with a gun as big as he is at 15 years old and going out and shooting and killing another teenager. And that's what gangs do. And that's unfortunately that's a lot crazy. of what rap music does. And if you are a modern day John Lennon, you know, I mean, he might, he might have rapped too in this day and age. I don't know. But you, I know you're talented. And even hey, if you the judge got, <laughs> the judge got jokes. <laughs> choose to continue to rap. You need to try to use your influence to let kids know that that is not the way to go and that there are ways out of poverty besides hooking up with the powerful guy at the end of the street selling drugs. And, you know, I know that happens for protection sometimes, but a much better way would be getting an education and setting, you know, hanging around with people who set a good example. And you be one of those people that sets a good example. Um, I mean, all right, so that's, that's my high horse on that. I could also go on. Um, but I, I want you to try to be more of the solution and less of the problem. All right? Mm. All right, so it is not um, lost on the court that the state, had they been able to come to agreement on certain special conditions, was willing to entirely dismiss the RICO count, was willing to entirely dismiss one of the gang counts, and was willing to entirely dismiss this you know, machine gun count. Um, was willing to give a sentence that permitted Mr. Williams to walk out of the door today and therefore does not seem to be particularly worried that Mr. Williams, if on the streets, would be a danger to society. Uh, I'm taking that into consideration and crafting my sentence. <clears throat> And in permitting 
a NOLO plea to the RICO count and one of the two gang counts. I um, would not be permitting the NOLO to the one if you were not pleading guilty to at least one of them. Uh, and, but you are, and y'all admit a factual basis for the counts that you are pleading guilty to. I find there to be a factual basis for those counts and for the remaining counts um, with which you are charged. I am going to impose a sentence, and, I, and I, I've taken a little bit of the suggested special conditions from the defense and a little bit of the special conditions suggested by the prosecution. Um, Nah, Brian's still really the GOAT. I'm not gonna lie, Brian's still really the GOAT. And uh, why does this look like a scene from Batman right here? Jim Gordon. <laughs> it's like Jim Gordon um, at the police station right here waiting for Batman. <laughs> but this the post-game interview. The post-game interview. After 2.5 years, the prolonged, the longest trial in history. The state really wanted... Thug for like really was trying to get Thug locked. He knows my feelings, which I'm not going to reveal. For as far as how Jeffrey's feeling now, he knows my feelings, which I'm not going to reveal for attorney-client privilege. But this is not the same as a not guilty verdict. That should have been ranked. But he, nobody here wakes up every day on a concrete floor that they're calling his bed gets up at 4 15 gets shackled at his feet his waist and his hand Man. comes to the fulton county courthouse to be on concrete eating out of a bag doritos is his meal of choice and then coming to a courtroom and sit there with a leg chain on him every single day and hear lie after lie so for Jeffrey go home today and not have another 90 days or 120 days of it, he is very happy, thankful to the Honorable Court. So to answer your question, this was not what I wanted. I don't believe that it is just, but I believe that under these circumstances, it is justice for Jeffrey Williams and he is delighted as are we and thankful. The goal, words from Brian Steele. I'm not lying, this was crazy right here, I'm not lying. Slimy and shady, watch me. Wait, wait, no, that's, that's not even the clip. I thought like this was crazy right here. He know young Thurdo got got the medical is, issues right here. He said he was eating out of bag and everything. Now this was a little crazy right here. I'm not gonna lie. I have things to do, and he has some medical issues that he would like to tend to. He eat young Thurdo got no got um, <sighs> medical issues. Eats out of a bag, Your Honor. He eats processed food. Only he gained 75 pounds. <laughs> nah. until he's lost it. <laughs> now he's like, all right, now you go a little bit too far. All right, now, all right, turn it, tone it down a little. <laughs> <laughs> now look at the security guards. They get in the front row seat though. They just stand here. I know their legs hurt though. It's hard, you know. For me, it's only three more months. It's enjoyable. I have. Now nah, my boy put the goggles on and took the goggles off. <laughs> nah. Only he gained seventy five pounds during trial. He's lost it since. <laughs> he said he gained seventy five pounds. He's trying and lost it. And negotiations totally broke down with the district attorney's office. Horribly broke down. And at that point, we believe that justice would be found with the Honorable Court, and Jeffrey just wanted to go home. How agonizing it is to know that we've spent a year trying a case where the prosecutors have put on lies, knowing lies, hiding evidence, is insane in 2024 in the United States of America. And the only reason Jim Gordon that revealed is because of you people. You people brought the truth to the community because nobody knows this. This is not the only courtroom it's happening in, and I just want to thank all of you. I especially want to thank Jeffrey for letting me represent him. 
I think he's a wonderful person who does wonderful things and will continue to do things even greater. I cannot express to you how Shaquille Kokomo, how Trisha Renard, how Haley, how my wife Colette, how Bram, how countless people, but especially Miss Courtney Edwards, have worked without sleep for three years representing Jeffrey and helping him. I will never be able to stand with anyone more ethical, honest, hardworking, insightful, intelligent, and kind than the Honorable Keith Adams. The gentleman to my left is the best lawyer in the country. Mm. Mr. Seals, do you think prosecutors negotiated in good faith at all during any of these negotiations? Let me, take this one. Let me answer that. The short answer is no. Um, this is a case that possibly could have been resolved if folks were reasonable. Um, but we did not believe that we could enter into good faith negotiations with people who wanted a case resolved. Well spoken black man. Simply to save face. And Jeffrey Williams was not going to say things that they wrote for him, that they wanted him to say, that was their theory when it wasn't true. And so, good faith, no. Uh, I don't believe we were ever really <laughs> negotiating in good faith. And you've been here the past year that this case has been on trial. You've seen the numerous motions for mistrial. You've seen the behavior of the state. You've seen the dishonesty. You've seen everything being hidden. You've seen, th seen things come out in court, in front of you. And so you know what kind of prosecution we were dealing with. And that's okay. You know, Mr. Steele and I have fought through this the past two and a half years. And Damn. as he said, we ultimately decided we were going to put our faith in the court as opposed to the folks on the other side of the aisle. And, you know, the best thing out of all of this is that Jeffrey Williams, in a very short period of time, will be home. And that's all we've wanted from May 9th when they went and picked him up and have held him in jail without a bond for the past two and a half years. He'll be home shortly. Keith and Brian, this is either one of you can answer that. Two questions for you. First off, you go into a blind plea, you don't know, right? There's, there's no, nothing for sure. Uh, what was your emotions like when you guys went into that? I would imagine the conversation, can you kind of take us into the room before you went out into court with the conversations going back and forth? Obviously, I know there's attorney clients. But it's a big decision. Well, I, I didn't want to do, I didn't want to give up the jury trial. Um, but um, that was a decision made, and once that decision was made, um, we were just thankful that there are people like the Honorable Judge Whitaker who understands what a trial is like and what it should be like. And I cannot thank the Honorable Court for being here and coming in. She is not our first judge, but she's the first time we receive justice. Mr. Adams, this is your second high-profile RICO case here in Fulton County. Do you think that maybe the prosecutor's office is, is abusing the connection? And what are your what are your opinions of, of RICO generally? I have, for the 30-some-odd years that I've practiced law, always believed that if you, as a prosecutor, think that someone has committed a crime, you charge them with the crime, you put it in front of a jury, and then you do it fairly and let the chips fall where they may. The courtroom is not the place to get adventurous, to get inventive, to think, well, we can't, we don't have evidence on him for any of these incidents, but maybe, if just maybe, we tie him up in a RICO and put him with people who may have committed crime, we can get him that way. That's, That's crazy. They was really targeting my boy. For some strange reason, the Fulton County DA's office seems to be in love with RICO, and my honest opinion is that they're in love with it because it makes it easier for them to try and convict people that they otherwise could not. There has been a lot of RICO cases like these past few years, I'm not gonna lie. Convict. And that's what was happening here. We we're fighting a, a mountain, reams of evidence, most of which didn't have anything to do with us. And so, is it an abuse? I think it is. There are better ways to. And I, I used to be a prosecutor, right? And I can tell you that there are better ways to prosecute cases than the way this case was prosecuted. Hold her on. 
Hold on. I'm not going to get into plea negotiation because they are privileged under statute, but it was outrageous. They would let him out of custody, but they would have a tether around him so tight that it's unconscionable. And how are y'all feeling about... All right. <laughs> I'm not watching all of this.